Hello Scene Peepers. Welcome back to our channel. Today, I would like to explain about a British drama war film called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. This movie might not be considered a new one, but you should put it on your watch lists as it contains lots of moral value and amazing historical cinematography. Released in 2008, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is an adaptation of the 2006 novel of the same name by John Boyne. This Holocaust drama is set during World War II and tells the story of two eight-year-old boys, Bruno, the son of the camp's Nazi commandant, and his friend, Shemuel, a Jewish prisoner. Spoilers ahead, take care, and enjoy. The opening scene of the film shows Bruno and his friends running through the Berlin street while pretending to be an airplane after getting off from their school. As an eight-year-old boy, Bruno is shown as a very active boy who is full of curiosity. He lives in a big house in the center of Berlin together with his dad, mom, an elder sister, and several servants. When he arrives at his house, Bruno sees lots of people helping his mother prepare a party. They are celebrating his father's promotion in his military career as a German soldier. Later, his dad told Bruno that they are going to leave Berlin and move to the countryside. At first, Bruno hesitates to move to a new place, feeling disappointed and worried about leaving his friends in Berlin. However, the decision has been made and he has no choice except to move with his family. At night, the guests seem to enjoy the party. Bruno and his elder sister greet their grandparents. German anthems are heard in the ballroom and the guests congratulate Bruno's dad on his promotion. It is shown in the movie that Bruno's grandma disagrees and feels unpleasant about his son's career as a soldier. She later got warned to not state her political view publicly. The spectators could assume that their grandma disapproved of the war and Hitler's idealism. After that brief argument, they enjoy the party together with the guests. People singing and dancing in the ballroom. The next day, after playing briefly with his friends, Bruno and his family begin their journey to their new home in the countryside. He still looks upset that he should leave Berlin and his friends. The family travels together by train before reaching their new house by car. Their new house is located near a farm and forest. It looks a little bit far away from the nearest city without any neighbors at all. When they just arrived in their new home, Bruno thinks that the new place is a little bit too shabby and doesn't look fun at all. There are several soldiers too in their new home who join his father for a small meeting session. Those siblings pick their room and Maria, their servant, helps Bruno to unpack. Bruno told Maria that this house doesn't feel like home at all. While waiting for Maria to finish unpacking his stuff, Bruno sees Lieutenant Kotler wandering around their house. He assumes that Kotler is probably one of his dad's soldiers who will be living with them. In his new room, Bruno climbs the window and takes a peek. He spots some people laboring on what he thinks of as a farm. The place that he saw is actually a concentration camp for Jewish people. In the next scene, it is shown that Bruno tries to ask permission from his mother to play with some children from the farm. At first, his mother permits him to play with them. Right at that time, a Jewish servant comes to the family's kitchen to put some vegetables. Bruno later told his mom that the farmers and children he saw from his bedroom all looked strange because they were wearing striped pajamas. Somehow, what Bruno says makes his mom feel anxious that she goes upstairs to check the window in his son's room. After his mom leaves, Bruno talks to his dad, asking him why the farmers and children are wearing pajamas. However, their conversation got interrupted by his mom. His mom later said that Bruno isn't allowed to play with the children because they are strange and different. This makes Bruno feel more disappointed. Later, it is shown in the movie that his parents closed Bruno's bedroom window permanently so that he can't peek outside. Bruno told Maria that his life is so boring that he has no one to play with and can only play with himself. While playing outside, Bruno is attracted to exploring his house's back garden. He then goes there, but gets caught by his mom who asks him to come back to their house and forbids him to ever explore that side of the house again. The next day, while eating together with his family, Bruno expresses his boredom to his parents. He misses his friends and his school. His dad says that he has hired a teacher who will come twice a week to teach both Bruno and his elder sister. The next day, while laying under the tree in front of his house, Bruno sees that her sister has come closer to Lieutenant Cutler, one of his dad's soldiers. He later asks Cutler where to find the wheel so that he can make a swing. At first, Cutler doesn't pay attention to Bruno's question and even tells dirty jokes to him, which Bruno doesn't understand. However, he later shouts to a Jewish servant, the same person who brought vegetables to Bruno's house last time, and gives him orders to help Bruno make his swing. Both Bruno and the Jewish servant later go to the outhouse in the back garden to pick up the wheel. In the outhouse, Bruno sees a window that he can use to explore his back garden further. After going back to his house, Bruno plays on the swing. However, he fell and hurt his knee. 
The Jewish servant saw him, took him back to the house, and helped Bruno treat his wound. The servant later told Bruno that his name is Pavel and he was a doctor a long time ago. They later share a lovely conversation before Bruno's mother gets back and interrupts. Seeing what Pavel did for her son, Bruno's mom thanks him hesitantly. Bruno and his sister later are shown to attend a lesson with their new teacher, Hairlist. It seems like their tutor promotes anti-Semitism and Nazi propaganda to them. After finishing his home school session, Bruno remembers the window in their back garden. Bruno then slips into the woods, arriving at the camp's barbed wire barrier where he meets Shemuel, a little Jewish boy and they become friends. Bruno sneaks into the camp occasionally to play with Shemuel and sometimes brings him food. On the other hand, the propaganda by their teacher along with her crush on Lt. Kurt Kotler makes Bruno's elder sister become a fervent supporter of the Third Reich, with posters and photos of Adolf Hitler adorning her bedroom wall. Her sister has changed. While his mother is going to the town, Bruno uses this chance to visit Shemuel. He is still curious why people are wearing pajamas and seems to play some exciting games. However, Shemuel said that they had no choice except to wear it because the soldiers took all their clothes. We can see both children's ignorance of the camp's true nature from their conversation. They both don't know that the horrid smell from the chimneys comes from the Jewish people who got burned there. Later, when Bruno invites Shemuel to come to his house for dinner, he just learns that his friend is a Jew and Jewish people are somehow trapped in the camp surrounded by a barbed wire barrier which is supposed to be used to prevent animals from going out. After arriving home, Bruno asks his family again about the horrid smell from the chimneys. His dad lied to him, saying that they burn rubbish there. At this time, Bruno is told that their grandfather is going to visit him. While attending a school lesson and listening to Herr List's explanation about how terrible Jewish people are, Bruno is perplexed because the family is only Jew. Their servant prisoner Pavel and his friend Shemuel, don't resemble List's anti-Semitic caricatures. He believes that not all Jewish people are as bad as what Herr List describes to him and his sister. The next day, Bruno is shown to bring some food for Shemuel and play a bit with him. However, they can't spend time together for too long. On the other hand, after Kotler lets slip that the black smoke pouring from the camp's chimneys is from burning bodies, Bruno's mother, Elsa, confronts Bruno's dad and learns the truth about his mission. Elsa doesn't support Hitler's mission to slaughter Jewish people by burning them. She thought that it was a horrible thing to do. After their confrontation, the family is shown to have dinner together to welcome the grandfather. During dinner time, Lt. Kotler admits that his father, who previously worked as a literature professor, is leaving his family and moving to Switzerland to evade national service. Ralph, Bruno's dad, informs Kotler that he should have reported his father's treason to the authorities. Kotler, embarrassed, hits Pavel for spilling a glass of wine. This incident burned the tension in Bruno's family. It is later also shown in the movie that Bruno starts to assume that his father is probably a horrible man which is denied by his sister. The next day, when Bruno sees Shemuel wiping glasses in his house, he gives him a cake. When Kotler discovers Bruno and Shemuel socializing, he chastises Shemuel and finds him eating. Shemuel informs Kotler that Bruno offered the cake, which Bruno fearfully rejects. Kotler then informs Shemuel that they will have a little discussion later. Bruno feels bad about lying and was worried that something bad might happen to Shemuel. Bruno eventually tries to make amends to Shemuel, but Shemuel doesn't show up to the fence for several days. Following that, Bruno secretly observes his father and other troops watching a propaganda film depicting the camp's circumstances, in which they are allegedly allowed to play games, eat in cafes, and attend concerts. Bruno embraces his father believing what he sees in the movie is true. Several days later, the family received information that Kotler is sent to the Eastern Front for neglecting to inform the Nazi authorities of his father's desertion. They also received news that Bruno's grandma died because of an explosion in Berlin. The family traveled to Berlin to attend her funeral. After getting back home, Bruno continues returning to the fence, and eventually, Shemuel reappears, with a black eye from Kotler's little chat. They renew their friendship and play chess together. It is also revealed that Shemuel has lost several of his family members and never attended any funeral. The dispute between Bruno's parents continues even after the funeral. Their mother later decided to bring them to live with relatives because it is safer, in actuality, their mother just doesn't want the children to live near a concentration camp. A day before Bruno leaves, he visits Shemuel and discovers that Shemuel's father has vanished after being transferred to a new work gang. Bruno vows to make amends by assisting Shemuel in his search. The next day, right before he leaves, Bruno comes to the camp again to help Shemuel search for his dad. 
Bruno digs beneath the fence to join Shemuel after receiving a prisoner's striped clothing and a cap to cover his unshaven head. He is taken aback by the large number of sick and feeble Jews. The lads explore one of the cottages for Shemuel's father, but guards suddenly surround everyone in the hut and force them into a large changing room. Back in the house, Bruno's family notice Bruno has vanished, searching for him everywhere. Bruno's dad later enters the camp after a dog trails Bruno's smell to his discarded garments outside the fence. Meanwhile, Bruno, Shemuel, and the other detainees are instructed to strip down to their underwear in preparation for a shower. The lights fade out as they are crammed into a gas chamber. Bruno and Shemuel grasp hands as a soldier pours pellets into the dark cell, causing the inmates to fear. Bruno's dad later notices the gassing and, realizing what has occurred, yells out his son's name in agony. His mom and sister, who are standing near the fence, hear his dad's pleas and fall to their knees, crying. The final scene depicts the gas chamber's closed door, which is now silent. This is one of the best historical movies that can move your heart. War is always madness and all is lost in war. What do you think about the movie? Leave your comments below. Subscribe to this channel for more movie recaps. Please like and turn on notifications to support this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.